This is a video I will be making for the sole purpose of submitting a ticket to Elden Ring's support and feedback section. In this video, I will go over what makes Sleep and Madness such a problematic and unbalanced mechanic in PvP, as well as offering my own realistic and well-informed solutions to make these mechanically complex and unique features align with more traditionally implemented balance philosophy. Developers and or balance team. If you see this, on behalf of everyone still playing Elden Ring PvP, thank you. For everything you've done and continue to do for game balance in both PvE and PvP. Truly, you are the heroes that we so desperately need. Sleep and Madness have always been vastly overpowered since the release of Elden Ring. To this day, nothing meaningful has been done to balance these mechanics out. This video will serve as a tool to help illustrate why these two status effects are so overwhelmingly strong. There is no one thing wrong with these two mechanics, but a combination of many things that hinder the balance of sleep and madness. Let's go over all of them. This is a term the PvP community uses to describe the buildup of status effects, such as madness or sleep, that is afflicted to a player even when successfully dodging an attack. This bug, mechanic, or whatever you want to call it, has been an issue since the original Demon Souls. Being present in all successor of Demon Souls for the past 14 years, I believe it's safe to say that fandom hits are here to stay. How does this affect sleep and madness? One concrete example is that when you perfectly dodge an attack that afflicts these two statuses, sleep and madness will both rip you out of invincibility and force you through the entirety of the animation. The balanced suggestions I have in mind might help mitigate the severity of being punished for correctly timing a dodge against sleep or madness. This leads us to the next point. Once you are asleep or maddened, your absorption decreases drastically, meaning the next attack that hits you will deal bonus damage. While on paper this makes sense, in practice things start to become problematic. To top it off, if said attack meets certain conditions, the attack will reset the inherent stun lock and lock you into another hit. This allows for devastating 4-hit true combos that can deal well over a thousand damage. You can checkmate an opponent in a single interaction. As stated before, even if you dodge the attack flawlessly, you will be forced to eat at least two free hits, which depending on the build, can be devastating. It is one of the reasons why these statuses are so strong. However, as stated before, it alone is not inherently unbalanced. The intended effect of these two statuses causes the player, afflicted with sleep or madness, to lose a large portion of focus points. While this may seem insignificant compared to the last two strengths, it still is quite punishing. Focus points are highly vital to surviving a PvP interaction. Be it a duel or invasion, this will often dictate whether your weapon skill or Ash of War will trigger or not. Being caught with no FP at the wrong time will often result in death or punishment. You might not be hit with a touch of death combo due to running out of focus points, but it still serves as a cruel but fair strength that Madness and Sleep both benefit from. When three players are using Sleep against an invader, there is literally nothing that can be done to win or survive. Here's a great example video of this in action. Lastly, counterplay requires too much investment. While this varies depending on build, players are often forced into sacrificing one or all of three things. A talisman slot, level allocations, armor, or a weapon slot. This discourages build diversity as players shouldn't have to be forced into large sacrifices in order to avoid being killed in a single interaction. One could argue that being hit while airborne can be used as counterplay, but it still doesn't negate the fact that sleep and madness can render a perfectly timed dodge useless. That goes against every fundamental balance of every Soulsborne Kiro Ring title to date. Yeah. 
When it comes to game balance, there are countless sound and thoughtful ways to balance imbalance. I hate to quote Xavier Renegade Angel here, but to stand and consider all possibilities is to drown in a tunneling sea of infinite potentiality. Many may agree or disagree with my solution, but with my 1000 plus hours of abusing both sleep and madness to its fullest potential, I believe my solution to be pretty well informed. And that is what I believe is the most important part of a solution. How well informed it is. Let's talk about the thought process that led to my solution. I'll start out by saying that sleep and madness are both very creative, compelling, and complex mechanics at their core. Just when I thought FromSoft reached the peak of their creative reserves, they outdo themselves yet again. What we want to avoid at all costs when balancing something is transforming said thing into something entirely different. As stated before, there is nothing that can be done to fix phantom hits. The focus point debuff makes for a unique and defining feature. As strong as the stun reset mechanic is, it's not inherently unbalanced. If anything, it encourages build diversity and experimentation by giving the player more ways to chain attacks together. Something that has been sorely missed since Dark Souls 3, if you ask majority of the gamers playing Elden Ring PvP. So, what exactly is the core issue with sleep and madness? The potential damage one can receive upon a successful proc of either status effect. Doctors hate him. With this one simple trick, madness and sleep will be fixed. Modify the absorption penalty inflicted upon a slept or maddened opponent to be a buff instead of a debuff. Have this buff change all absorption values to a set value of 80, and have the duration of this buff last roughly 4 seconds. This way, all incoming damage once slept or maddened is reduced by 80%. Now, why 4 seconds? Take a look at this true combo. This is what I like to call the Black Swordsman Touch of Death combo. Against this player with these absorption values, this combo does a total of 1570 damage and lasts a total of 4 seconds or 286 frames. To my knowledge, this is the longest combo that can be performed with sleep and therefore is a solid estimate of how long the duration should be. With the applied changes, this combo will only do damage as opposed to 1570. In the likely event your madness or sleep bar fills to maximum during your invincibility frames, all your opponent will be able to gain from it will be chip damage and a hard knockdown in some cases. A nice middle ground that is significant enough to be punishing, but not harsh enough to be unfair, yet fearsome enough to be both practical and useful. One last thing, when something is nerfed, new problems that haven't been addressed will often be illuminated. If sleep were to be balanced this way, I'd suggest buffing the amount of sleep that is inflicted when using sleep grease or sleep drawstring grease, but only for weapons that have no arcane scaling. Unlike poison and rot, sleep grease inflicts close to nothing when landing a hit with the grease applied using a weapon without arcane scaling. A disproportionately low amount of status buildup at that, compared to the other status effect greases. Thank you for watching this video, hopefully this is enough to acquire some rebalancing to sleep and madness. And with that, I'm out.